Welcome back, everyone. We're here with another Q&A. Anything that I say is definitely not going to diagnose or replace your medical care. Check with your doctor before implementing any of these ideas that we talk about. We have a great uh, room today of, uh, in the green room. We have great guests that are on that we're going to answer the questions as well as on social media. So, Steve, dive right in. Let's get started. Well, I, I sure will. I'm slightly prejudiced because our first guest is from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, arguably the racing capital of America anyway. And uh, I'm going to unmute her. And this is Mary from North Carolina. Mary, you're on with Dr. Berg. Good morning. I'm 65. I have no gallbladder for 28 years. Uh, they told me I have a fatty liver a long time ago. Um, I have abdominal fat. Uh, I'm a pre-diabetic, um, and my biggest problem is I have blood sugar drops two or three times at night that wake me up. Mm. I have a continuous glucose monitor with an alarm, so I feel better about that, and um, I'd like to sleep through the night. That's a good goal. Um, have you started keto yet or intermittent fasting? I have uh, increased my fasting time to 10 hours. And then um, I found that uh, just the last two nights, I had all the symptoms, but not the blood sugar drop. And that was confusing to me. Wow. So, <clears throat> so something is changing. Um, have you started to uh, reduce your carbs yet? Uh, sometimes I try to eat something low carb, like a healthy salad with grilled chicken on top. And then I have like severe carb cravings after that. So I've tried, but not yeah. real successfully. Probably what, what you're running into is uh, without that gallbladder, we're, we just don't have enough bile to extract some of the fat soluble nutrients and things that could satisfy your brain. So you're like, okay, good. I can do this. I think, um, one thing that I would do if I were you is I would um, add the apple cider vinegar, like a tablespoon of water, which will automatically before in the evening, um, somewhat before bed, because that will actually right there help give you energy directly. You can use it as fuel. <clears throat> it won't spike your blood sugars. It can help stabilize things when you wake up in the morning, also through the night. The other thing is berberine is a natural kind of a natural metformin that can help with insulin resistance, which you probably have some pretty severe insulin resistance. But <clears throat> if the goal is to uh, handle these issues that you mentioned, um, we want a combination of both intermittent fasting and keto. The problem that you're running into is you, you're, you probably can't go for very long without being hungry or craving. So the way to go longer is to lower your carbs. So uh, maybe you start off with some replacements for the carbs, like some healthy versions of the, uh, you know, pleasure foods or sugary foods that you eat. And then you start to lower the carb, <clears throat> which then will allow you to uh, start to shift the body more to fat burning while you add more fat to your meals to make you more satisfied to go a little bit longer with fasting. So now you're at 10 hours and you're at 12, 15, 18, and then 20. And I think you're just right in the, the transitional phase where <clears throat> if you just push through that and you keep tweaking things with the things I mentioned, you'll get to a point where when you're burning fat, you have absolutely zero cravings and zero hunger. And once you have that, it's working. It's going to be a lot easier because trying to do this with cravings is really tough. So um, you also probably would benefit by taking some bile salts uh, after your meals, because that way it will give the bile to start to mm. replace what's missing too. Um, and then one last thing, which I think is going to be the icing on the cake. I don't want to mention cake, but uh, another product you can order is called Tudka. Tudka. And Tudka is a type of bile salt that I recommend taking um, between meals just, just to... Uh, help with your liver, help blood sugars, help a lot of things, and uh, help kind of keep your bile ducts open and free-flowing. So that's T-U-D-C-A, Tudka. Yeah. Just take two of those on an empty stomach um, somewhere in the day, not with the meal. And then um, I think those actions will um, put you in good shape. 
Cool. Okay. Um, what about those um, stevia and those artificial sweeteners? Yeah. Yeah, I would start doing those as your uh, replacement, so that way you're not deprived. That way you get the, the the sensation of sweet, but without the actual sweet, without the actual sugar. Okay. Okay. I've been working on those. Okay. Oh. Great. I thought that the berberine would lower my blood sugar and make it worse at night. What what happens is that it'll help to uh, regulate insulin resistance, which is a little okay. different, and so it makes okay. insulin just work better. But if you're okay. if you're eating carbs, and you know, we're still gonna have a problem through the day if you eat carbs. But um, what normally happens. Um, with someone like you is that your liver will start making more sugar at night. Um, it's called gluconeogenesis. It'll make sugar. And then the insulin comes in there and pushes your blood sugars down at night. Uh, that's because it's trying to counter that um, effect. So, um, so that's really what, what, uh, what you're probably running into. It's your sugar is not low because you're eating low sugars. It's becoming from the insulin that's too high because you're eating carbs and also you have insulin resistance. So yeah. Um, like 500 milligrams. What time of day? I would do that. You should probably do that um, towards the late part of the day. That way all night long, because your, your problem is like you want to sleep through the night, right? So we want to really fix this sleeping because that alone will help your blood sugars just by taking that stress uh, and getting you have to have a nice rejuvenating sleep. Because I know if I don't sleep, uh, I'll crave carbs. Well, Mary, we're going to have to move along, but we appreciate your question and hope that you would get back with us and let us know uh, how some of these suggestions might uh, aid you in getting a good night's sleep, which is essential. So thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, you know, speaking of uh, bringing up cake, I shouldn't, but having uh, to do with having your cake and eating it too, if you look up uh, discipline in the dictionary, you will not find my picture. Uh, I've been one of those that struggled my whole life. And intermittent fasting beyond everything else puts you in a position, I think, where maybe even sticking to keto is easier because you're confining it to a certain period of time. I don't eat until the afternoon. Everybody has a different routine. I'm not the least bit hungry right now, and it's 11 a.m. my time. Uh, and it's like, again, having your cake and eating it too because I've never found a system where I could be satisfied and not torture myself all today with wanting to uh, eat anything, much less junk food, and it's a terrific thing. So if you haven't tried intermittent fasting, Dr. Berg style, then uh, you're really missing out on a fantastic tool to maintain your health, lose tons of weight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Steve, just on that topic, it's interesting because I have a, a friend who uh, – is doing what he calls, uh, I guess he coined it, it's called dirty fasting. Dirty fasting, not dirty keto. So I, so I, I said, what's that? So he basically uh, eats the Nutella with the bread and uh, might go to McDonald's, whatever, and he'll chew it, enjoy it, but he won't swallow it. Okay, so spits it out. And so <laughs> he, he said that works. In fact, he'll say that he'll get to a point where he's full. He's not swallowing anything, so he gets the, because a lot of the scent, the, the receptors for these foods are in your mouth, right? And so, um, it works for him. He does it. Apparently, he does it. He can fast for a whole week doing this. So, I probably won't do a video on it, but you know what? If it works, um, you know, if you need to do that. Yeah, dirty intermittent fasting. Wow. Well, or fasting. audience, if you see a guy spitting out his French fries in line at McDonald's, you'll know who he is. Right. All right, let's get on to a fascinating quiz question, and this is um, the first one of the day, Doc. There you go. All right, uh, let's see. Why do uh, the majority of people with gluten intolerance have zero GI symptoms? Like they don't have bloating, they don't get abdominal pain, and they don't have um, diarrhea. Interesting. Okay, well, listen, in addition to our guests uh, in the green room from around the world, let's go ahead and give a shout out to the rest of them. Uh, so we'd like to say a good morning to all of our viewers joining us today from the UK. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, 
Barry will be with you. Every owned guy. I think I screwed her name up. Well, she'll straighten us out in a, in a little bit. Okay, so from the UK, Canada, Mexico, Norway, Chile, the Philippines, Jordan, Barbados, the Czech Republic, Nigeria, France, India, Poland, South Africa, Israel, the Netherlands, Taiwan, the Dominican Republic, Ghana, Belgium, Italy, Ethiopia, Bermuda, Germany, uh, Argentina, Japan, Trinidad and Tobago, Sweden, uh, Austria, Spain, New Zealand, Brazil, Bangladesh, Turkey, Portugal, Austria, uh, Australia, excuse me, uh, Oman, Lebanon, Uzbekistan, Iran, Peru, Saudi Arabia, Ireland, uh, Eritrea, the Virgin Islands, Denmark, Switzerland, Lithuania, Scotland, been there, Indonesia, Wales, Slovakia, Malaysia, Hong Kong, I think this might be the longest list ever, Uganda, Qatar, Cyprus, Jamaica, Finland, Cameroon, Algeria, United Arab Emirates, Pakistan, Armenia, Ireland, the Singapore, Aruba, and all across these United States. I think we could have a whole show in just naming people that are listening, but I think that would get a little monotonous. So there you have it, audience. Thank you all so much for joining us from around the world and enjoying, among other things, intermittent fasting. It's just so great. Okay, why don't we go to social media, which we've neglected thus far. Louise from Facebook, can we order from Tutka and Berberine from your website? Do you have such a thing, Doc? No, I don't have those products. You can get them anywhere. They're very available. So there's certain products that are easy to get, um, and they're they're pretty good quality. So I I wouldn't need have no. I wouldn't have any need to create those products. I'm, my the products that I create are mainly um, either difficult to get or the quality is really bad out there. So, um, but yeah, you can get these anywhere. Wonderful. Okay, let's go back to so- social media again, or rather, stick there for a while, and. Uh, let me scroll up a little. Kappa Kappa from YouTube. Do you have any advice on how to heal severe leaky gut syndrome in an ASD child, whatever that is, with lots of food intolerance issues? Well, the first thing you have to do is avoid the things that are causing the problem. And I would say out of anything, uh, gluten is at the top of the list. So you have to avoid grains, um, and start following the healthy version of ketogenic diet. Now, to heal that area, um, bone broth is uh, something. Um, glutamate is a supplement that you can get to help heal the gut. And uh, cabbage juice, believe it or not, has uh, properties in there. It's actually loaded with uh, glutamate as well to help heal the intestinal lining. Um, uh, there's also, as far as the diet, um, I would recommend doing carnivore because the fibers are going to irritate your gut. Um, so that would be the best advice for someone that is younger or older that has leaky gut. If you have leaky gut, you've lost the, the mucosal barrier, that, that layer of mucus that um, m- makes it wide open to have certain food particles get into your body through the lymphatic system there and then create all sorts of immune reactions and um, allergies and and even autoimmune problems all right very good again to youtube Uh, alma from youtube i've been on keto on and off for a while thank you for your honesty and i've been having a lot of joint pain and fatigue Uh, lately my new doctor recommends going vegan do you have any thoughts on the vegan diet yeah it's very difficult to to do and if you have inflammation I, I i wouldn't go in that direction simply because the uh, there's a lot of things on the vegan diet that can uh irritate your gut and increase uh, more inflammation because uh, there's high amounts of omega-6 uh in grains and um other foods so um and also yeah you know you're not going to be doing um fish or fish oil so how are you going to get your omega-6 i mean three and there are you can do algae, but that's a little bit different um, as far as your your DHA and your omega your omega three. So it's uh, it's it's possible. Uh, it's not uh, something I recommend um, if you're just trying to resolve inflammation. Um, and um, vitamin D is another good anti-inflammatory nutrient in high amounts for inflammation. But watch my recent video on joint inflammation because I cover all the different sources and I think you'll you'll benefit from that. Very good. Okay. Again from social media, um, 
This is a sweeping statement. Holly Ann from YouTube, should high glucose corn syrup be banned from American food ingredients and supply? Question mark. That would be a good idea because it's in all these foods and uh, uh, it's so badly processed and it's uh, loaded with um, all sorts of things that uh, have no benefit to your health whatsoever. And it's like, it's just so super concentrated. Um, yeah, I, I would, um, unless you're putting it on your pancakes and uh, using it that way, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm being very sarcastic. <laughs> very good. Well, Holly Ann, Dr. Berg is on your side. Uh, Om Winga from YouTube, would you recommend using activated charcoal when treating low stomach acid and SIBO? No, I would use that more for uh, toxicity. Uh, and like, let's say you have um, some poison, someone's trying to poison you or whatever, I would take that. Or you ate something, food poisoning, I would take that. Or maybe some bloating. But SIBO, uh, that's usually you want to increase the uh, hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Okay. So we want HCL, um, betaine hydrochloride, and then or some apple cider vinegar. That will start to acidify the stomach and decrease the uh, microbes coming through. The other thing that I would take is some bile salts because chances are you probably don't have enough. And the bile salts actually go through the small intestine to act as a detergent to kill off these microbes because you have microbes growing in the wrong place <clears throat> and then they're fermenting. So if you add more fiber, uh, that would be bad. So you want to probably do carnivore for a while and take the betaine hydrochloride. But I don't think charcoal would be the best thing to take on that. Okay, very good. And Teresa, this time from Facebook, can babies be fed whole eggs? Now, I think they would choke on it. I would recommend cutting up first. Dr. Berg? Yeah, if a baby is very, very young, you know, like, I mean, the breastfeeding is going to be the best thing, honestly. And then maybe when they get uh, to the age of um, 18 uh, or a year old, then maybe start introducing some really high quality eggs. Um, yeah, at that point. But um, if you could do breast milk, that's going to be the best thing um, that you, especially to prevent um, all sorts of problems on the road, like immune problems, allergies, and uh, have the best chance of um, uh, having a good health. Incredible. Okay, uh, quiz question number one asks, why do the majority of people with gluten intolerance have zero GI uh, symptoms? And 90% of our respondents say it is because gluten can cause inflammation in the gut, and 10% say because the large intestine process is improved by gluten-free foods. Uh, no answers at all. Uh, excuse me. That's it uh, on any other topic. So there's your 100%. So, bread, I mean, uh, Steve, you probably uh, know there's uh, people like bread and pasta, right? And certain crackers and biscuits and things like that. And so as soon as you start getting into that area and you tell people, oh, you shouldn't eat that. Um, you, literally, it's like you're taking away a big part of their life. So <clears throat> I want to tell you something about this uh, topic on, um, on gluten that goes beyond just the sugar effect, the turning in the sugar and the weight gain and glyphosate, which is herbicide that's in the wheat and things like that. Um, even if you do gluten-free, you still have those problems. But gluten in general is one of the only uh, proteins that can't be fully digested. Um, and so gluten is really a complex of different proteins, one being a series of gladnins. Um, and that protein, has a real fascinating effect in the gut and the brain. Um, it stimulates the opioid receptor, giving you a morphine-like action. Now, why do people take morphine? It's for pain relief, right? So what they found, and I have a, I'm going to do a video on this, is that um, you're really kind of uh, stimulating like this pain relief in your gut. So you don't feel the symptoms going on, but they're going on. And then that gives you this idea that, wow, maybe I'm okay. Maybe I can eat that bread without a problem. Yet you have all these other issues that you might not think are connected, but they are. So um, that's really what's going on with gluten. And um, I have a, a video release on that. And um, in Europe, um, they ferment grains longer. So there's less gluten. So there's probably less issues. 
um, and also uh, they have less enrichment, like the iron that's in a lot of these um, grains, it creates a lot of bloating as well. But that being said, just because, you know, you don't have a digestive reaction doesn't mean that there could be a problem going on. And so, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I, um, I'm doing a lot of DNA testing and I'm finding the great majority of people have gluten intolerance from a genetic level. It's actually more common than I thought. Interesting. Yeah, well, they don't have a lot of they don't have a lot of bloating or they don't have GI problems, huh. which is interesting. Oh well, poor things. Liberty Yaz from YouTube. Here's some good news. I have been on healthy keto since November and have lost 50 pounds. My physician wow. says all my numbers are perfect, which uh, was not the case a year ago, and why I went on keto 25 pounds to go. Um, go Liberty. Uh, we're rooting for you. And of course, says thank you, Dr. Berg. And there's, uh, by the way, tons of these things flying by on the comments from YouTube and Facebook. We don't have time to put them all. And of course, we want to get to the things that interest you. But that good news should be interesting because this stuff really does work, uh, as is evidenced by people all over the world turning in, tuning in, excuse me. Okay, Fanny from YouTube, I have kidney disease and I am on dialysis. What should I be doing to help heal my kidneys? Thank you. I have had several people, even in my clinic, come come to me um, on dialysis, usually from being a diabetic for a long time. And so um, it really depends on what stage you are as far as kidney disease. If you're a stage five, then that's a situation you're gonna have to work with your doctor to, um, you can't really do you know the same diet necessarily because um, you, you have to avoid phosphorus and potassium and things like that. But if it's not a stage five, um, I would definitely go low carb. Dr. Fung, who's a kidney specialist, I mean, that's what he recommends for his diabetic patients. You can, you know, start cutting down the sugars and, you know, you might be surprised how um, you have kidney improvement. Uh, one gentleman that I did work with that I'm not going to make any claims, he was on dialysis. And he got to a point where he didn't need it anymore. And his doctor said, you know what, we're not going to do it anymore. So, and we worked with his diet. I'm not going to say that that happens to you or anyone, but uh, I think it can help. And you want to go low carb and do intermittent fasting immediately. All right, very good. Well, listen up, boys, to this question. And here's question number two, Dr. Berg. All right. What is the best trace mineral to raise testosterone? All right, my pen is quivering over the paper dying for the answer. So answer that as you always do, uh, audience. And why don't we go back to a phone call that we've gotten today from Stephanie. Uh, and Stephanie, I forget where you're from. I'm from Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Good for you. Don't mess with Texas. And why don't you go ahead with your question for um, Dr. Berg. Hi, Dr. Berg. So the question is actually for my mom. She's 58. She's five foot five. She's 155 pounds. She eats really clean salads every day, lean meats, intermittent fasting, the 18 sticks. She's really like, she tries to be really healthy. But um, the question is, is that the other day, randomly, she had said, I would love to experience the sensation of feeling full. And when we talked about that, I was like, what do you mean? And essentially she said that she's never eaten anything in her life and felt full. Like mm -hmm. she can feel hungry with the growling and the hunger pain, but she's never felt full before. Like even as a child, it like never, even if it's a full three course meal with seconds and thirds, she doesn't feel full. When I would feel sick after all of that, she just doesn't. So I was wondering what's up with that and what she could do about that. So, so I have a question. Um, is it the feeling full or is it feeling satisfied? Because, you know, eventually if she keeps eating, she, she's like, there's no more food that can fit in there. Right. So um, I just asked her and she said, it's, it's satisfied. It's feeling okay. satisfied. Yeah. That's uh, that's interesting. Um, there's a couple things uh, that I would bring up um, just with animals and, in, and insects. Uh, if you feed uh, carbs to them, they're not going to feel satisfied until they have enough protein. Uh, I'm assuming that she's eating enough protein. And if she is, if she's not, then that could, that can actually satisfy her especially the amino acids, especially if he has enough stomach acid to break it down. But the typical um, reason for not feeling satisfied is, um, and I don't 
I'm not saying it's in her situation, but there's there's not uh, the nutrient dense foods. They're very hard to find nowadays. I'll give you one example. I live on a farm. Um, I have my own chickens. We have eggs. When my son comes over, when he eats those eggs, he has a very fast metabolism. He can't he can't even finish like four of them. Normally, he could just keep eating. So when you're eating foods from usually the grocery store that are just not as they're not grown, like even the vegetables aren't grown on soil, they're hydroponic. It's going to be hard to be satisfied because the, the, the density of nutrients aren't in there to satisfy that. That's one thing. So going to the farmer's market, finding nutrient-dense foods, important. The other thing is if you, she might need more bile salts. So at the end of the meal, um, adding more, like adding some bile salts, that might help increase uh, the bile to extract more nutrients from the fat. So you get the fat soluble nutrients. I know, I, I know that that alone can cause someone to just not feel satisfied. Um, so those are the things that I would look at. And then um, the other thing is that, um, you know, your microbiome also helps with a lot of um, digestion. And um she may need uh, more probiotics too. So adding probiotics at night before bed or even after the meal in the form of kefir, plain kefir, um, might be the ticket with some fat. So she has a little dish of kefir right at the end of the meal, put some walnuts in there um, or even um, macadamia nuts or even um, pecans. And I think that will, that might help her. She's been listening. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's great. Stephanie, thanks for a great call. And we're well wishes uh, to your mother. And let's see. Um, we're waiting for some quiz question answers. But in the meantime, the early bird house, what a, what a handle from YouTube. Could you please explain the pros and cons of uh, bentonite clay? I am low on, in iron and enjoy the clay, but I'm feeling... Uh, very tired these days. I don't know how you can enjoy the clay, but I hope it works. Mm -hmm. You know, when people crave iron, um, sometimes they crave dirt and even clay. So um, I don't know if bentonite clay is the best source of iron, but um, bentonite clay is, um, it works by not absorption, by adsorption. So things stick on the outside, like 2,000, um, times the weight of that molecule of bentonite clay just can accumulate around it by kind of acting as a magnet. So it's really good uh, to help detox you, uh, pull toxins out, reduce toxicity, get rid of the um, reactions from any type of detox. But it's also good as a microbial, um, antimicrobial. And um, so that's what I would use it for. But the fact that you are iron deficient, you should probably do like red meat or liver. And if you don't like that, have them in a, get, get them in a, like a grass fed liver pills. Um, that would, that would pretty much handle anemia. Um, but of course you want to find out why you're anemic in the first place. Is it uh, menstruating? Is it a problem with um, needing um, betaine hydrochloride, which will help you absorb the iron? So these are all things, all these things that I would look at. Um, first like why why you have the problem in the first place but i don't have enough data so we will just we won't go there but um that that's my short answer okay very good why don't we go to nona uh now uh who's in new hampshire uh and i hope it's warming up up there at this point and nona you are hang on let me click the right button here nona you are on with dr bird Dr. Burke, thank you for giving me this opportunity to ask you sure. questions. Uh, um, I started um, uh, to begin with, I'm 59 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I have hypothyroid, uh, I have diabetes, I'm diabetic too, type, type 2 diabetic for almost 30 years, uncontrolled, very, very bad sugars, even though I dieting all my life, never changed my sugar levels. And um, also, um, so I was kind of, uh, you know, very worried about my health. And uh, 19 days ago, I 
found on a YouTube your lecture about intermittent uh, dieting and keto, healthy mm-hmm. keto. And you know what? I so much believed in you that the very next day I stopped. Oh, we lost her audio, Doc. I'm not sure why. Your videos. And um, uh, so my sugars for 18 days, I have this little meter, and there is a green zone, so that this is a normal zone. My sugars are within this green zone because I have never had it, never. Uh, my sugar was uh, as low as 100 yesterday. And it's like before, if I would have it, I, I would feel like a hypoglycemic, but I felt just great. I eat and my sugar does not go up. Right. So I thank you for You're that. Welcome. I have a question now. The uh, uh, I am uh, doing, uh, I'm kind of rotating. One day I eat one meal and another day I eat two meals. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so when I eat two meals, I eat about uh, between 11 and 12, and the next meal is uh, between four and five. And the uh, one one meal day, I eat between 12 and one. So I was uh, wondering, does that, uh, this inconsistency, does it interfere with uh, intermittent dieting? Uh, is it okay to have these different times, like 18 um, and 23 yeah. hours? Yeah, let me answer that because that's a that's an important question. I think it's actually even better to do it that way than to be always exact in the same time. If you rotate it and you, you can change it up, um, that actually will help you because it's, uh, if you think about... Um, our bodies were developed um, not from this consistent eating, right? Our, long ago, <laughs> we didn't eat at the same time. We ate when we found food. So our bodies are designed and they do really well at uh, switching it up, not keeping it the same all the time. Some day it's two meals, some day it's one meal. It's totally fine. You can rotate it. I mean, the times, I think you should experiment with that. But I'm glad that you're doing better. Too bad uh, uh, you've had it for so long. But yeah, this is the answer to um, um, diabetes, I'll tell you that. So well done. Thank you for uh, coming on, Nora. Yeah, we appreciate it, Nora, so much. And continue to keep in touch with us so we can hear uh, some follow-up stuff from you, some great answers. Let's go back, uh, Nora, and I know you're able to see this too, to our second question, which asks, what is the best trace mineral to raise testosterone? And um, I'm sure the boys are particularly excited about this. 75% of respondents say it's zinc. 20% 20% say it's selenium, and 5% say it's calcium. Okay, and the answer is zinc. Wow. Zinc. Yeah, zinc is uh, um, is the best way to increase uh, testosterone, and uh, zinc has a, it's probably one of the most important trace minerals for immune system, but it also helps with the sense of smell and taste. And um, if you're low in zinc, there's a real simple test to determine that and it's called a zinc test and you can get it online and you just take a little bit of zinc on your tongue and if you're deficient you won't even taste it it'll taste like water but if you're if you have enough you it'll be like this really like metallic bitter taste so that's just a really simple simple test but yeah testosterone uh, can be elevated when you have zinc you're very good I'm not sure how to construct this question, but it's sort of interesting. Michelle from Facebook, what are your thoughts about people drinking their ketones from people that are selling on social media? Does that make sense? Can you drink ketones? Yeah, you can um, you, you can get uh, two different types of ketones. You can buy them, and they're very expensive. So I think it's kind of um, unnecessary. Um, you can also take MCT oil to get ketones, which is a lot less expensive. And, um, or just allow your body to create its own ketones from your own fat. Because when you take ketones, realize you're getting the benefit from ketones on your brain for sure. And maybe for energy, but you don't get the benefit of using your own fat. So you don't really burn fat because your body's going to use those ketones as fuel before it taps into your own fat. 
So uh, I've experimented with it. Uh, I've, I've done the liquid ketones before workouts. You know, you might see a little change, a little improvement here and there, but I think it's uh, not significant significant enough to spend the money for those ketones. All right, very good. Let's hop on to the next question. This one, uh, great relief for the audience, is a true false, or you have a 50% chance of being brilliant. There you are, Doc. True or false, osteoporosis is a calcium deficiency. Okay, climb on that, audience. And let's see, we talked about the ketones. Oh, here's one, Barb, from Facebook. What are your thoughts about using colostrum to boost skin health instead of collagen? Well, it depends if it's immune related, anything immune related, you want colostrum. Collagen is not a bad thing. If you want to improve your gut or, you know, if you're, if you're not doing like a nose to tail type thing, you're not doing organ meats and let's say you're eating chicken, but without the skin, that type of thing, then maybe collagen can help you. But the point is that the colostrum is um, an awesome thing for the immune system. You just have to be careful. If you're um, allergic to casein or have severe lactose intolerance, um, which there could be potentially some of that in there, because it comes from dairy, it could create a little bit of a reaction. But if you don't have a problem with that, I think it's a, a really good remedy for uh, severe immune problems, um, especially if you have a history of taking a lot of corticosteroids and things like that or prednisone. All right, last but certainly not least, and I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly, Abera is in the UK, and I'm unmuting her, and Abera, you are on with Dr. Berg with your one question in 30 seconds. Go. Hi, uh, Doctor. Thank you so much for um, all your work. I watch all your videos. I need to sometimes pull myself away and just get on with my work because I can watch you from morning to night. Um, I've just started. I'm a 52-year-old woman and just stopped um, HRT since I started the ketogenic uh, diet and intermittent fasting. Um, what I'm calling about today is my back pain. I've got this back pain on the upper left part. I know you talk a lot about back pain and how when you started your intermittent fasting and ketogenic it stopped and all of that. And you kind of have linked it in one of your videos to the, to the liver right if i'm if i'm correct mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. um i don't know why um i also get some kind of pain at the lower part of my um my abdomen the lower the lower side towards the right and then this back pain towards the left God. And just to quickly say, I started getting some little rashes, and I know you've said that kind of links to the liver and all of that. So I just mm. wanted to see if you could help me. <laughs> okay, good. So, do you have any problems with um, with um, endurance up going up a hill? Ooh. Um, not really. I don't live in an, a hilly area, so I haven't really tested that. Okay. Do you have I'm any problems? I'm not a keen with... walker, if that actually helps. Okay. Do you have any problems with sleeping? I used to, uh, but I'm getting better um, since I started the keto and stopped eating late. So right. last night was a bit funny, but that's I, 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 I usually don't sleep after teaching. I don't know whether it's because I get all hyped up. Um, I, I'm an academic, so but um, so I, I'm pinning that down to getting all hyped up when I teach. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So that um, that's uh, more of the uh, sympathetic nervous system, the uh, flight or fight, which um, can definitely counter or inhibit the digestion. Um, there's a there's a very um, rare um, link between right shoulder or neck or back and heart. And I don't think that's your case. I think what's happening no. is that it's um, uh, maybe a little sludge in the bile ducts because they do cross over into the pancreatic ducts. And that could kind of create a little back up into the pancreas and, and the refer pain because you have the phrenic nerves on both sides, the right and left. So that can go right to the left shoulder. Um, so mm. the remedy is the same. It's tutka on an empty stomach. You take two in the morning and then two in the afternoon, tutka, and that will open up the bile ducts and allow things to drain and 
that pain should go away unless there's an old injury in the area that you have to, you know, work on the opposite muscle. Um, you can do that by hanging uh, with your arms and stretching the latissimus dorsi underneath the arm for the upper back. That would help that. Um, and then for the for the lower abdomen, I would just start working on maybe a good probiotic, uh, working on probiotic foods like sauerkraut, and start to include that because that sounds like there could be some some help needed in that area. But that's kind of what comes to mind um, off the bat. So. Yeah, why don't you try that? And and then the the rash that I was the little rash that I was saying it seems to not be going. I thought it was going away, but it somehow it comes back. It's just a little rash. But I I know you talked about the skin and connections with you know things not working <clears throat> properly on the inside. Well, if, if, if there is a, a little bit of a subclinical uh, loss of bile salts, which is causing some of these issues. Um, one of the problems is it tends to back up in the system and it can create okay. some skin rashes as well as itching. Okay. All right. So that, that, and cause you'll find that even the, um, the tongue cut actually is good for the skin. So it might kill two birds with one stone. Very good. Abira, thanks so much for being a great representative of the UK. You're welcome. And, uh, let's see, let's move on. By the way, audience, I tried to wrap up all our other duties except for questions so we can have a um, a marathon uh, of social media. But let's go to the next question, Doc. Okay, so true or false, osteoporosis is a calcium deficiency, and then what did everyone say? Oh, let's see, excuse me. Um, I was worried about that. Uh, answer number three, we don't have it yet, so let me put that on pause and uh, go back to something else. All right, Doc, let's see. Uh, Tina from YouTube, my uncured beef hot dogs contain hydrolyzed corn protein and potato starch. Are they bad for the body? <laughs> Please advise. I don't know why they have to add those fillers in there. Yes, it's bad when you start combining these starches. Um, I'm not correct. Uh, I may be wrong with this, but I do know for a fact, um, modified food starch, corn starch, maltodextrin have a loophole and you don't have to list those as uh, sugars. You can list them under the carbohydrate to then allow you to say, Hey, we have no sugar in our food. Um, but those, all three of those items respond way worse than sugar. Okay. Like table sugar, which is on the glycemic index, like a, what 64. Well, these like are in the like high nineties or even over a hundred. So, it doesn't help your blood sugars. And when you combine that with protein in the hot dog, not a good combination. Um, definitely not keto and um, probably could affect uh, your, your digestion a lot. I know in the past when I combined meat with bread or, or even like meatloaf or whatever, boy, I would just not feel good. Or even barbecued uh, ribs where all the sauce, the sugar sauce with protein. I always get so tired after I'd eat that. And so now I know why, because it doesn't really mix. It creates a problem with digestion. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy those hot dogs. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, now I've caught up with the audience and the question was uh, true, false osteoporosis is a calcium deficiency and 95% of our respondents say it's false and 5% say it's true. That's uh, quite a spread there. Well, to the 5%, um, the question is, can you correct, if it's true that osteoporosis is a calcium deficiency, can you correct osteoporosis with calcium? And the answer is no, you can't. Um, you, you, you probably end up with calcified arteries. Um, so osteoporosis um, is a combination of hormonal issues with low estrogen, a problem with a lack of vitamin K2, a problem with a lack of um, vitamin D, lack of trace minerals. So it's a whole package. Um, you can also develop osteoporosis by consuming too much phosphoric acid in soda. You can also develop it from stress. So there's a lot of factors. I'm going to release a video on this up, uh, coming soon. But you realize, Steve, that over 50% of women over the age of 50 have what's called osteopenia, which is the precursor to osteoporosis. I, I thought that was 
excessive. That's the, too many people are having this problem and they might not even know it. They're not at risk for fractures, but it'd be good to know if you have that so you can then quickly reverse it. And uh, watch, stay tuned for that video on how to do that uh, coming up probably sometime next week. Okay, very good. Now this uh, next question, a true false, will be of um, interest to people in saloons around the world. And there it is, Doc. Okay, true or false. If pure alcohol has zero carbohydrates, okay, does this mean it's keto friendly? You folks think about that. Uh, let's see. So <clears throat> Ellie from YouTube, what do you recommend as a natural way to treat someone with undifferential connective tissue disease? Wow. I, I don't want to go on any prescriptions, no drugs. So I think it's possible. I think, um, I don't have the specifics on the treatment or what's involved with that. But, um, if you have some disease that's genetic, which I'm assuming it's genetic, um, it doesn't mean you have, you can have that problem. It's really has to do with the epigenetic factors mostly. Um, so I would, <clears throat> I would, um, implement all the basic things that I've, I've been telling people for a long time, you know, healthy keto with intermittent fasting, um, more fasting than usual, and then see what happens. It just might help you. Um, many times it's not just a matter of just consuming more protein or amino acids, especially with a collagen disease. I think you can pull off miracles if you do um, intermittent fasting for a lot of these diseases because your, your, your genes, your DNA starts to kind of start surviving when you start to not feed it so often. And this is why we see the results with intermittent fasting. And also the cold therapy, the uh, cold bath um, immersion tank, which I've been doing daily, which uh, is very interesting. I like it. It really, it's amazing results cognitive wise, inflammation wise. It's uh, something I'm going to be doing on a daily basis. So if you haven't got any information on that, watch my video on that. All right, well, the audience for quiz question number four has thrown all their money on one number, and the question was true-false. If alcohol has zero carbs, does it mean that it's keto-friendly? And 100% of respondents say, nah, it's false, can't get away with that. Well, that's, uh, that's correct. So we got it, finally got, um, everyone had a correct answer on that. Um, because it's keto, it's true, that, like if keto-friendly has to have low carb, right? But um, the question is, is alcohol a carbohydrate? And the answer is no. Huh. Um, does alcohol have calories? The answer is yes. It has almost as many calories as fat per gram. But the way the liver cells deal with alcohol is that it uh, considers it a poison, which it is, and then it, it has to deal with it and it has to detoxify it. And so it has to break it down. And so indirectly, you start developing um, fatty liver, um, uh, inflammation, which then leads to insulin resistance in the liver. And then you start developing um, scar tissue and eventually cirrhosis. But other than that, I think you're going to be totally fine. But um, that is the problem with uh, the alcohol. It's one of those things that people say, well, I'm on keto, I'm doing low carb, I'm doing intermittent fasting. Then you find out they're do also doing wine every other day. And so they, in their mind, they're like, well, that's, it's not much sugar in there, but the alcohol is keeping you from getting results. So just another factor that that's not sugar <laughs> that could uh, be stopping you from getting to your goal. All right. Very I'm good. Sorry. I'm sorry to mention that because it's not a popular, you're not going to become popular when you tell people to stop drinking. No. Anyway, but they're hundred percent correct. Congratulations audience. And here's the final true false for the day. Okay. So true or false, since the brain is mostly fat, then photamine, that fat soluble B1 vitamin is good for your brain and the, and the brain issues. All right. What say you audience? Now, uh, let's do a marathon of uh, social media. Oh, here we go. Gender from Facebook. What's the best way to break a 48-hour fast? 
you want to go slow, have a little bit of maybe a little, maybe a half, like a, maybe an egg or a little bit of salad, and then wait for maybe a couple hours. Have a little bit more food, wait, and have a small portion of something, but don't have carbs. Don't pig out because um, uh, you can have some issues with that. I, I made that mistake. I think I, I was fasting 48 hours and I was like, okay, I'm ready to eat. And I just started eating like way too much thinking, oh, I'm okay. And then I, I got really sick. So um, you don't want to do that. You want to ease into it, especially if you're doing even longer fast. All right. Very good. Rumana from Facebook has a two for four is how can I recover from PCOS and tremendous hair loss? And how can my mom recover uh, lung fibrosis and tongue ulcers? Boy, that poor family. Well, the tongue ulcers can come from gluten. That's one of the symptoms, gluten intolerance. So you have to avoid grains or a B12 deficiency. Um, and the first problem, remind me, PCOS. She's trying to get rid of recover. Yeah, PCOS. PCOS. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, too much androgens coming from too much insulin. It's a simple problem to solve because you just need to reduce insulin through going on a low carb intermittent fasting and that will bring your androgens down nicely. And that's the connection behind that. Um, inositol is a really good remedy for PCOS, but if you don't cut your carbs down, I don't think it's going to do anything for you. It's going to be a waste of money to get that, but take a good amount of inositol with the ketogenic diet and you can say bye-bye to the PCOS. Um, I think that will help you greatly. All right. Once again, the uh, audience is rolling the dice putting it all on one number and the true false was since brain is mostly fat and photamine, the fat soluble B1 is good for brain tissues. A hundred percent of them say it's absolutely true. This is interesting because benfotamine is a fat soluble B1, right? And it's really good for peripheral neuropathy. That's uh, nerve pain in the bottom of your feet or your hands. But apparently, it doesn't uh, seem to cross the blood-brain barrier. So it doesn't um, affect the brain. It doesn't create any significant changes in the brain dysfunction that comes along with a B1 deficiency. Uh, I recently found this out by just doing a deep dive into another video that I'm going to be releasing. So um, if you have a lot of the deficiencies that are associated with a B1 deficiency, which are in the brain, like, um, especially the hippocampus, like memory loss, um, difficulty learning, brain fog, um, also ataxia, which is like a gait problem, unsteady gait, and sleeping issues, insomnia. Um, you'd be better taking a, a natural form of B1, and of course, I'm not biased of my own natural B1, um, but I do have one, and it's called um, allothionine. And apparently, this natural B1, which is you can extract it from garlic, is also fat soluble, and it does penetrate the brain, and it does create some cool effects. So, uh, recently, I had someone who had uh, took like four of them. That's 200 milligrams before bed, and had the n best sleep they've ever had. So it's also good for that excessive thinking, nervous anxiety, worry. Uh, a person needs B1 and get it in the natural version. Uh, if you take the synthetic version, you'd have to take a lot more. And some of those synthetic uh, B1 can actually give you paradoxical type symptoms or opposing additional worsening of symptoms. And so there's some issues with that. So I don't recommend that unless you're taking it for very short term. All right, very good. Well, the last question of the day, audience, no offense, but wah, 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 wah. Didn't get that one, but the previous 100% correct makes it a wash, so you're all great. Pamela from Facebook, I've heard that a drop of castor oil a few times a day can get rid of cataracts. What are your thoughts? I don't know if she was dripping in her eye or in her tongue, but anyway. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I don't have any data on that. I mean, it could, um, but I know it's good for um, getting your eyelashes back. Um, 
so that's one one thing that it's good for. I'm not sure about cataracts, um, but the liquid MSM is good for cataracts, um, and sometimes even floaters. But it penetrates the eye, and it can actually help. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't I don't have any data on that if okay. it can help or not. Very good. Well, Faith from YouTube, and again, our uh, thoughts and prayers go out to you. What would you recommend for someone with stage four metastasized cancer in the liver? Can you help with this, um, you know, for healing? That's a terrible diagnosis. So if I was in that situation, uh, what I would do as the most important action is I would um, start fasting. And it has to be the worse the cancer, and stage four is, is bad, uh, the longer the fast. I would fast for three weeks starting yesterday. 21 days, I would do that. And if I could go longer, I would go up to even 30 days or even longer. Um, the only problem is if you're very, very fragile and thin and old, trying to do that is going to be really hard because you, you need some fat on your body to fast. So, um, but if you can fast for a long period of time, you're going to be creating some really powerful um, epigenetic um, resistance to this cancer spreading. In fact, um, I've done interviews with several people who had stage four cancer, then they did this and uh, they're, they should have been dead a long time ago. Um, and they're surviving. Guy Tundelbaum is one of them. And he even wrote a book on it. He said, I interviewed him. And there's also a protocol that, um, that I uh, helped sponsor uh, a very expensive study in Europe uh, of a protocol that was very significant as far as the results. And uh, you can watch my video on that as well. Search that. And I, I talk about the results. But um, it's a protocol that doesn't have toxicity. So it's, it was comparable. The results were comparable to chemotherapy. Wow. Now, I'm not making any claims. I'm just telling you what happened on mice, the mice study that we did. So if you do have any pet gerbils or hamsters that have cancer, you can apply that um, protocol. Interesting. Okay. Well, Faith, we're certainly pulling for you or your loved one that is in that condition. And we hope that uh, you were able to resolve that. Beth from Facebook, I've been lactose intolerant since I was little. Can you explain why magnesium makes me feel sick all of the time? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, it could be the form of magnesium or maybe you don't need it. Um, the other thing with magnesium if you are deficient in potassium and you take magnesium, that can make your potassium deficiency a little bit worse. So maybe what you do is you just take more potassium to see if that doesn't put things back in balance. All right, very good. I think we're about to wrap up, Doc. And um... Well, yeah, so um, we're back on track. We were gone for two weeks. Um, I have a lot of uh, interesting videos coming up. Uh, please comment down below if you have any ideas of videos that you want more data on. And um, thanks for your attention. If you're listening this long and this far into this show, I uh, appreciate you and uh, have a wonderful weekend. We will see you next week, same time.